Hi everyone, welcome to today's webinar titled HR Information Systems, the Key to Organizational Success. I thank you all for joining us today. Please note this session is being recorded and the recording will be available within one to two business days on our website at ce.uci.edu. Um, please feel free to visit our free events page and click on the On Demand tab to view the recording. My name is Anna Yoshida and I'm the program representative for the Human Resources Management Certificate Program here at UC Irvine Continuing Education. Um, so first, I'll start off with a quick overview of Zoom features so you'll know how to submit questions throughout the presentation. Next, I'll be giving you some information about our Human Resources Management Certificate Program. I will cover the requirements, fees, and details regarding the upcoming courses for our fall quarter, which begins in September. I will then turn it over to our guest presenter, Howard Swordloff, and at the end of his presentation, we'll have a brief Q&A session. And finally, I'll leave you with my contact information so you can send over any additional questions that we didn't get to address. So if you look at the bottom of your screen, you should see a row of icons. Click on the chat bubble icon and the panel will show up. If you encounter any technical difficulties during this webinar, please send a chat message over to John Tang and he will help you troubleshoot any issues. If you have a question for me or Howard regarding the content of this presentation, please submit it in the chat and we will address it at the end if we have time. Um, and please be sure to send your questions to all panelists. Here's a brief overview of the Human Resources Management Certificate Program. Our program provides the knowledge and skills needed to fulfill the role of an HR generalist. You will see later on that our courses cover all the topics needed for this role. And taught by industry experts, this program will help you have a positive influence on the HR function within your organization. This program was created for a wide range of people and roles, and it supports those who are both currently in HR and those who are looking to switch careers into HR. The certificate program is composed of six required and two elective courses. To be eligible for the certificate, students must complete all eight classes with a letter grade of C or better, as well as a completed declaration of candidacy form. This form can be thought of as declaring your major into the program. Um, there is no formal application process, so um, it would be this declaration of candidacy form that puts you on track to graduate. Since there is a small candidacy fee, I typically advise students to take a few classes in our program first before they declare just to make sure they want to complete the full certificate program. To receive the certificate after completing all program requirements, students must submit a request for certificate, and there's no fee associated with this form. Um, all requirements must be completed within five years. Um, and as I just mentioned, our certificate program consists of six required courses and two elective courses. Uh, we offer the courses in both online and on-campus formats. And the required courses are listed here on the screen. Foundations of Human Resources Management, Leading Su Successful Organizational Change, Talent Acquisition, Management and Retention, Compensation and Reward Systems, Human Resources and the Law. And you can take either Introduction to Employee Benefits or training and HR development um, as the sixth required course. And we highly recommend students to start with the foundations class. And the elective courses are foundations of leadership, conflict resolution, mindfulness-based strategies in business, communication in a diverse and changing workplace, modern business writing, influence persuasion negotiation, HR metrics and analytics, and we also have HR digital tools and workplace trends. Um, the elective courses can be taken at any time during the program. Here is a screenshot of our online course schedule, which has the most up-to-date information. You can find course dates, textbook information, um, and as well as instructor information 
by clicking the green online or on campus button. The to be scheduled indicates when particular courses are scheduled to be offered. Um, please note we alternate our course offerings between online and on campus every quarter. So you can take the courses in whichever format you prefer. So for example, you see here that some courses were offered online in the summer and are now on campus in the fall and vice versa. So um, you can expect the same alternation in winter and spring. The length of the program depends on how many classes you take a quarter. Most students take two classes a quarter and complete it within a year. The length of each class is in relation to its unit value. So for example, a four unit course is 12 weeks long and a three unit course is 10 weeks long. And again, exact course dates can be found by clicking on these green buttons. In the upcoming fall 2018 quarter, we are offering the courses as shown on this slide. Each course is listed here with its start and end date. The online courses are in an asynchronous format, which means there's not a specific day or time you need to be logged on. Um, and they're structured weekly from Monday to Sunday. The on-campus courses meet once a week in the evening, um, so typically 9, 6.30 to 9.30, sometimes 6.15 and 9.30, um, as you can see on this slide. Since elective courses vary in unit, um, the length of each course also varies. Enrollment for the fall quarter is currently open, and students may enroll either online or over the phone by calling our student services office um, at the number provided here. We do encourage students to enroll at least two weeks before the course start date to ensure they have a spot in the class. Um, I do want to mention that the Compensation Reward Systems course and HR on the Law course that are both offered online in the fall are filling up, so I do recommend um, enrolling as soon as possible if you are interested in those courses. Estimated fees for completing the program in a classroom setting is approximately $4,700, and for the online format is $5,200. Required online classes are $650 each, and the on campus classes are $585 each, and the elective courses vary in price. Please note that you pay for each class as you enroll, opposed to the entire tuition sum at once. Some courses will require textbooks, which is not included in the course fees, and students may purchase their textbooks from any vendor of their choice. Um, usually they prefer Amazon, as there's different options such as paper, hardback, um, ebook, rent, and it also has um, the most competitive shipping prices. There is also a $125 candidacy fee for the program. And if you would like to take classes on campus, a parking permit is required. Um, students can purchase a permit at the time of enrollment. An evening permit for one quarter costs about $50. And I'd like to share information about a special discount we offer for this program. We offer 10% off course fees to members of ATD Orange County and Los Angeles chapters. So if you're a member of one of these chapters, please visit your chapter website for more information um, as they will have the discount code for you. And at this time, it's my pleasure to turn it over to Howard so he can provide an introduction and begin his portion of the presentation. Great, thank you, Anna. Um, Good morning, my name is Howard Swardloff and I'm a technology solution professional at Microsoft focused on human resource management software. Today, what I want to talk about is, um, actually Anna, can you give me control? Yes, there you go. Great, thanks. Okay, today what I want to talk about is starting out with an overview of what we call the HR maturity model. And this is just a level set to understand HR departments and how they work, especially related to software. We'll talk about a software approach being a, a best of breed solution versus a true HRIS, which is more of an integrated approach. Uh, we'll talk about where 
HRIS or human resource information systems fit in the model, the core elements that you look for, who some of the vendors are that, that provide uh, human resource information systems, and then we'll wrap up with benefits to the organization. And I'm trying to leave time at the end for some questions. So, you know, please submit questions through the chat window and I'll address those at the end. To start out, when we look at HR, it's no longer about finding job candidates with certain sets of skills and experience. It's really about finding the right experience, the right skills, and the right fit for the company's culture. HR can no longer stay as a department that's more transactional in nature. It needs to become a, a important business unit aligned with business imperatives and deliver innovative talent solutions. As an HR practitioner, you really need to focus on delivering to multi-generational workforces with a lot of demands on flexible working options. What that really means is you have to be a lot more agile in how you adapt your practices in order to meet the needs of both the business strategy and also the workforce. Practically speaking, what that means is you're expanding beyond the traditional focus on talent management and getting more in, into strategy as opposed to the process and the transactions. So as we look at this and we hear what HR leaders are, are concerned with, it's really about becoming a more innovative business partner with a greater responsibility to design, simplify, and improve the entire talent experience, delivering a culture of empowerment for both employees and managers. As an HR leader, you have to juggle a lot of different business priorities, employee expectations, and programs. You end up being an expert in culture, in diversity and inclusion, in people analytics. You have to know how to uh, do performance coaching constructively, deal with multi-generational and blended workforce engagement. You also get into employer branding, develop team agility, and provide continuous learning and leadership development for your employees. There's also succession planning, compensation management, benefits management, and moving everything to a digital workplace where you have mobile applications and easy self-service type functions for your employees and managers. That's a lot for any department to have to deal with. And to complicate it even more, the piece that's missing in this is really insight. HR needs meaningful talent data that they can translate into a clear representation of what the company culture is today. These insights are what provides the foundation of HR programs and initiatives that are required to really become impactful within the organization. As HR has typically been more of a, an administrative transaction-based department, managing benefits and payroll and things like that, HR leaders don't have that data and that insight today to really make the decisions that they need to make. There are a lot of disconnected systems, there's rigid processes, and very basic reports. So as you're competing for talent more, it becomes more important to get the insights that you need in order to align the talent that you need from the time you attract them and go through the application process to the time that they're onboarded and eventually you know, being transferred or, or retiring from the organization. So when we look at the maturity model, we kind of start out with an HR department that we call managed. And what that is is really 
getting the mission critical needs of the organization met, you have you know all the paperwork filled out for compliance. You know, I nines when you hire somebody, W fours go to payroll. All of that administrative function is done, and people are satisfied, and they're not really getting any value because you're really only meeting mission critical needs. And the reason that you can only do that is because your systems are fragmented. You're managing risk as it comes up in a very reactive mode. And you don't have you know, real data that you can work with to build strategies. As we move up the maturity model, we start getting into this plan phase where you start to build some relationships with different departments throughout the organization and you begin to automate a lot of your processes. This is where you start getting into adoption, where people are accepting HR programs, they're accepting HR initiatives, and they're starting to work with you a little bit more. As we get you know, further up, we get into more of a proactive mode, and this is really where HRIS is gonna start entering in the maturity model we start to look at things like competencies and skill sets driven against jobs. And we start to establish more of those partnerships where we're really understanding what the departments need, as opposed to just a department coming to us and saying, hey, I need two more people. And you don't know what skill set you're looking for. You don't know what culture is gonna be a good fit. Um, as you establish these partnerships, you begin to get a little bit of support towards the business strategy, and you begin to become a, a more effective within the organization. Moving up, we're into integration, and this is where, you know, again, you're using more of the HRIS. You're starting to bring in more of the, the capabilities of it. You're bringing in performance management that's going to support business plans and, and business strategies. You're starting to align what you're doing as an HR department with what the business really needs and what the business strategies are. And that's when you start to really drive impact for the organization because you're able to start understanding what it is that the business needs, where they're trying to go in the next three to five years, and what you have to do from the perspective of bringing the right talent in. You know, as we talked about early, the, the right talent and the right skills for the right culture, um, all of that is where you start getting these integrated systems within the HRIS, and you can start to target those efforts. A completely mature, human resource department is going to be a trusted business partner. And what that means is when senior leadership or the board of the organization are sitting down and they're planning their strategy, you know, for the next 12 months or three years or five years, however far out they go, HR is at the table with them. And HR is able to participate in those decisions discussions. So if you're going into a new product line and different types of people are going to be required or they're buying new machinery and you need people that know that machinery, HR is involved at the beginning of that and they're able to plug that into the HR information system and use it in an integrated way that helps drive a lot of flexibility in how you attract employees and how you bring them on. So what is an HRIS? You know, I've mentioned it a few times in the maturity model. It's really, you know, different things to different people. You know, some people look at it as an administrative core HR system that manages, you know, things like, uh, you know, employee discipline and grievances and demographics and compliance. Um, whereas others look at it more completely where it includes recruiting and applicant tracking and onboarding and performance management and a lot of other areas. You know, we look at it really in three areas. When we talk about employees, we want to start out by attracting the best talent that we can get as fast as we can get them. And that's where 
you know, the applicant tracking component of an HRIS is very important. Recruiting is very important. There's a lot of things that go into that where you really need to make sure you're understanding what does a bad hire look like and what does a good hire look like. And those are things that, you know, through the, the data model of an HRIS, we can start seeing, you know, by department or by job, uh, how long people stay, uh, where you're recruiting from. If you're getting somebody from LinkedIn, do they stay longer than somebody you get on, you know, Monster? If you go to a university career fair, do those people stay longer? And you start to get some of those metrics that really help you to know how to track, attract the right people and where to attract them from. As we move through the employee life cycle, we need to engage them. You know, there's a lot of literature out there that talks about the billions of dollars of lost productivity just in the United States from employees that are not engaged at work. They go to work, they stay on Facebook or other social media, they're, you know, running personal errands on work time, they're, you know, not really paying attention during a meeting because it's a boring meeting or whatever. And that's costing companies billions of dollars. So part of the HRIS is to identify how you can really help employees to perform better, to stay engaged better. A lot of that is through compensation modeling and making sure that you're understanding what is the market for that particular job. A, a good HRIS will integrate with market surveys where you can look at the midpoint salary for uh, that particular job description in that particular geography, and you can make sure that you're slightly above that. If you're too low, you're taking a chance that employee is gonna leave for a better offer. If you're too high, you're putting them at the max and you're not gonna be able to give them good raises and, and bonuses and still stay profitable as an organization. So you really need to manage that performance and that compensation model well to keep your employees engaged. And then thriving, that's where, you know, we want the HRIS to provide the right learning management, the right development opportunities and career paths to really build out high performing teams and help employees to become the best that they can be. So when I think about an HRIS, I'm really thinking about everything that goes into running an HR department, you know, from the point where you're attracting an employee to the point where you're helping them thrive and become, you know, a high performer. Um, the other thing that you'll notice on here is I do have, you know, a data model and gateways and connectors listed because, you know, as I mentioned, when we go through the maturity model, it's very difficult to get to that single integrated system that's the highest level of maturity. So we end up with a lot of disparate systems where you may be using one thing for applicant tracking and something else for performance management. An HRIS can have gateways and connectors into those systems so that we're still able to get the data and provide the insights that HR departments are missing. So when we think about, you know, HR, you know, you really want to drive operational excellence. That's the key to really becoming a good strategic and effective HR department. So you start with strategic planning and, and growth planning, and you kind of build through this cycle where you're aligning the corporate visions and values and uh, getting collaboration with, you know, the senior leaders on where the company's going as a whole, and you're creating whatever's needed to support that strategy. So we look at it in really three areas. You're starting with an overall business strategy and a business culture and, you know, where the, the company is going as a whole. You then need to align your HR strategy in a way that it's going to support those business strategies. And it's very important to ask yourself as you develop those strategies, 
are they aligned with the business strategy and are they going to drive the business strategy? If they're not, then you probably want to rethink it and, and not do it because you're spending time on things that aren't of great value to the organization. And then programs are put in place to support the HR strategy. The HRIS is the critical piece that manages those programs. So as we look at you know, business strategies in terms of you know, what's the plan, the employer brand, the culture, work environment, diversity and inclusion uh, goals, you know, then the HR strategy gets built around that. And you really start with, you know, the workforce plan and finding people that, you know, you're going to try and attract in. And then within the HRIS, you have to have the tools in place that are going to help with talent acquisition, that are going to give you those insights of where to look, what to look for. Uh, you want to make sure onboarding is a good experience. And HRIS can drive a lot of workflow and a lot of things around the onboarding process to automate it, put it in the hands of, of the new hire. Uh, you can send them things to do you know, prior to their first day or on their first day and provide them digital tools that make it easy for them to do a lot of self-service type functions, enroll for their benefits on their own, set up you know, any mentoring programs that they may want, look at career paths, all of that gets taken out of the hands of HR people and put into the HRIS where it can be managed and then insights can be gathered on, you know, who's using what program and what, you know, what's being effective versus what's not effective. So in looking, you know, for an HRIS, uh, you know, there's a couple things that I really look for. You know, one is it has to be configurable. And the reason I, I really stress that is HR departments try things that don't work. And business strategy changes where HR needs to keep up and, and do different things. So you want to be able to go in and if you decide you want to do a wellness program where you're doing you know, nutritional counseling for employees or a weight management program, you have to be able to set that up and configure it. If you expand into new markets and you decide that you want to, you know, offer Spanish classes to everybody, you know, so people can learn a second language, the HRIS has to manage that. So having that configuration where you're not calling in consultants to rewrite things or customize things and you're able to easily plug those programs in and discontinue programs as things change, is extremely important. Compliance is also, you know, very important. There's a lot of workplace regulations within HR. Uh, we've got, you know, the Americans with Disability Act. We've got Title IX, you know, with various discrimination. We've got, you know, OSHA, which is, you know, our occupational safety. All of these are things that when somebody comes in with a lawsuit or an allegation, of a violation, we want the HRIS to give us everything that we need to prove that we're right and to prove that we're in compliance. So that's another piece where you need to make sure that, that that's in place you know, within the HRIS. And then actionable. You know, this is something that I can't stress enough to people is we, we're overrun with data. And it's great to have all this data in an HRIS, but if we can't get access to it in a way that helps us to make decisions, then it's meaningless data. The trend that I've seen is you know, we kind of start out with reports and reports are great to tell me what happened. You know, we move into you know, a little bit of dashboarding where you know maybe through dashboarding and drill downs, I can start to see why things happened. But I really want to be able to do something to make it happen the way I want it to happen. And those are the, the insights that I refer to quite a bit where I'm able to go in and see hiring from this particular source 
drives, you know, better, um, you know, high, higher performing employees. So I want to be able to go in and say, that's where I want to recruit from. Or if I have a program that I see is driving some other behavior, I want to be able to focus on that, do more of that, and drive more of the behavior. So those are, are things that you want to make sure that the HRIS is able to support that level of detail where it can start to drive some of those insights and look at the data in different ways. All right, so when I talk about data and insights, you know, there's a number of key areas that we really want to focus on, you know, within the HRIS. You know, one is recruiting, and this is another area where I see a lot of recruiters that will talk about, you know, their time to fill a position, and that's great. You know, they're going out and they're finding people and they're filling positions very quickly, which is all good but it's more insightful to look at time to hire where you're saying okay from the time that we open the position how long does it take for that person to start because that'll tell you there's you know a bottleneck between when they fill the position and when an offer letter is sent and when the person actually starts where there may be cases where a candidate gets tired of waiting for an offer letter and somebody else responds faster or communicates better. And even though the recruiter thinks they filled the position, that person takes a job somewhere else. So getting you know, those types of things that go across not just recruiting, but across offer management and talent acquisition, that's going to give you a, a more complete picture. So you want to make sure that HRIS is including all of that. Um, onboarding is another big area where, you know, we want to start to see what's the most effective way to bring somebody on. It's, you know, it's great to hire somebody, but if it takes them six months before they're productive, you're losing a lot of money. If you can knock that down and get them productive within, you know, 30 days or, or even, you know, three months, you're a lot better off than having a slow onboarding process that brings employees up to speed too, uh, too slowly. We also look at internal mobility, and that's, you know, looking at uh, how are employees, you know, getting promoted? How are they transferring between departments? Are they able to learn new things, try different positions within the company, and stay engaged? You know, that's, that's going to tell you if you've got somebody that's been doing the same job, you know, day after day for, you know, the last, you know, five years, they may be getting tired of it and they may, you know, be looking elsewhere if they don't have an opportunity to move within the organization. So it's another big area that we look at is, you know, that, that transfer of people and the mobility. When we talk about collaboration, you know, this is a critical thing that an HRIS will provide because you want to be able to, communicate with the other departments within the organization and really understand what their strategies are, what they're looking for, you know, in their talent and how you can best work with them. I see a lot of people starting to do job analysis where you're looking at not only a job description, but what are the core competencies and skills that are required for that job? You know, competencies are more of those softer skills, like they need to be good with people or they need to communicate well, you know, where skills are more the things that are hands-on, they need to be able to, you know, work a computer or work a piece of machinery. And having a manager be able to go in and collaborate with you on that analysis or even, you know, people doing the job, you know, having them come in and, and putting in what they do every day, you know, that helps the overall process, uh, you know, from talent acquisition and onboarding, you know, having surveys of employees and finding out what's important to them and getting that into the HRIS starts to drive some other insights where we can develop programs to really meet the needs of our workforce. 
And then, you know, managers, they need insights as well. You know, they need to know what's going on with their department. They need to know, uh, you know, if they have something coming down from leadership that says, you know, we want you to enter this new market or go into this new product line, they need to know if they have the skill sets on that team or if they need to go out and hire somebody else. There may be cases where managers can look and see that the skill that they need is on another team and there might be an opportunity to pull that employee over. So those are things that, you know, manager insight is, is very important from the HRIS. And then engagement, you know, we, we talked about engagement. It's, you know, like I said, it's costing billions of dollars to companies because employees are not engaged. And it's important, you know, for them to be able to go in and see what's it going to take to keep employees engaged. The HRIS can tell you where employees are working well, where they're not working well, what types of programs are really driving interest and, and engagement. And then, you know, we talk about people analytics a lot. The, the people analytics is really about trying to get information on the employee that is going to be meaningful and tell you something. You know, there's uh, areas where, you know, we can look at, you know, how the employee is engaged, how long they're staying with the organization, start to compare that against metrics that, you know, publish benchmarks for your industry or, you know, try to find out what your competitors look like in terms of how long their employees stay. And getting some of these analytics and monitoring HR programs and employee feedback is critical to kind of move beyond the standard HR report to more of things that can give you insights and help you make decisions. The, the HRIS is going to integrate with you know, surveys, capabilities, with uh, different feedback mechanisms where you can start to get that feedback about your uh, employees, how they're feeling, and drive insights that drive a lot of additional programs that you may wanna put in place to really help your workforce and still balance you know, what is the program cost versus what's the benefit you're getting. And that's an important discussion to have with management. As you say, okay, I wanna do a wellness program. The first thing management sees is that it costs money and it's not affecting sales. You have to have the analytics behind it to justify that if we can do this wellness, we can save this amount on health insurance as an example. Um, all of those, types of insights on your programs along with your people are what drives those analytics to really help you make those key decisions. So in HRIS really is going to put people at the center. It breaks it down into different areas where, you know, we start out with the candidate and and that's where we have talent acquisition, we have recruitment, we have applicant tracking, the interview cycle, uh, offer management, you know, sending offer letters and negotiating. All of that needs to be managed within the HRIS. And then onboarding the candidate, moving them into becoming an employee. Uh, you know, then the HRIS has some, some elements to it of, things that are good for employees and managers, where uh, we wanna give them the ability to really thrive and, and learn new things and uh, help them with performance management where you know maybe it's not an annual performance review anymore, but it's more coaching sessions. And we're able to start really working with, with people and helping them get a career path and helping them move through the organization and and do very well. And then self-service, you know, there, there was a day that HR was, you know, basically an information desk where people would come and ask information about a benefit or ask information about a policy. As much of that as we can move to self-serve functionality, the better 
you are. So look for, you know, an HRIS that's going to have those self-serve components to it where employees are able to do things for themselves and managers are able to do things for themselves. And then for HR, you know, we're, we're HR practitioners, we need something for us as well. And uh, the HRIS provides, you know, the core administrative functions. And as much as we talk about HR being strategic and driving business strategy, the reality is you still have to make sure people get paid. And you still have to make sure, you know, people are enrolled in benefits. So those are administrative functions that we want to automate as much as possible. And we want to streamline that where as an HR practitioner, you're not bogged down in paperwork. You're not bogged down making sure that things are, are filed you know, for uh, compliance reasons or things like that. And you wanna get to those people analytics. You know, that's the key of an HRIS is providing those analytics that are gonna drive the programs and the decisions that you make as an HR practitioner. So looking at, you know, what's really at the core of an HR system? You know, I kind of put employee portal in the, in the middle and, you know, that's an employee and a manager self-serve function. Everything needs to drive to that level because um, the more you can put in the hands of the employees and the managers and the more you can empower them to do things for themselves, the better the system is going to be. Within that, we have things like benefits management. Have employees go in, open enrollment, life changes, all of those types of things can be managed through a portal. Uh, employee demographics, you know, this is critical information that you need to have on, you know, anybody that that applies to your company, anybody that works for your company, you wanna make sure you know when somebody files a lawsuit saying that you discriminate against women or you discriminate against some minority, you need to have those demographics that are gonna support that you're not discriminating. You need to have the demographics of what the skill set of that employee is so you can show why you know, that person was not hired or why that person was moved out of the company. Um, and then, you know, the, the core HR functions, you know, we, we have to manage compensation. Uh, you know, I mentioned earlier integration with uh, market surveys so that we know how we're paying people. Are we paying them, you know, market average, you know, above or below. Time and attendance, you know, it, it's, you have to provide, you know, vacation and sick time tracking. You have to provide, you know, if you're dealing with a lot of hourly employees, you may have scheduling that you have to do. Uh, you know, they may have a sick day they need to report. So all of those are things that, you know, go through time and attendance. Uh, that could be time clock integration. It could just be, you know, family leave or, you know, vacation leave for salaried employees. Um, but that's a core element, you know, within HRIS. Applicant tracking, you know, we've talked about quite a bit already, but you want to make sure you're getting the right talent. So when you look at the applicants, how are you mapping skills to jobs? HRIS uh, is going to provide skill profiles where you can look at all of your applicants, you can look at your job requirements, and you can start seeing a percentage fit. And you can start getting a report of you know, who's the best fit for that position. And that's who you want to interview first. And you track them through the system. You make sure, you know, the HRIS is going to give you information to make sure that you stay in communication with those applicants so you don't lose them to somebody else. Performance management has to be flexible. There's still companies that do a rating system and an annual review that's, you know, both for, you know, uh, raises and merit increases, as well as, you know, overall performance. There's other companies that are 
doing you know weekly or biweekly coaching sessions and managing goals and development through the performance you have to have you know something that's going to support whatever your policies and your your goals are for performance and then workflow is critical you know if you're not communicating with people and you're not driving approvals in a, a automated fashion you're spending a lot of time on things you shouldn't be uh, you know if there's something new that needs to be communicated to all the employees HRIS can put it push it out there if it needs to be communicated just to managers HRIS can do that if there's anything that needs to be approved you know somebody needs a new hire and you need to get you know budget for that new hire approved workflow is going to kick in and do that and then Reporting and analytics, you know, I have been talking about this, you know, throughout this presentation, but reporting and analytics is critical. You know, if you don't have the analytics and you don't have the decisions or the, the data to support your decisions, then you're really just being reactive. And we need to make sure an HRIS is going to have a good reporting and analytic engine to it. So who are some of the key vendors out there that supply HRIS? There's you know, probably a couple hundred that you can find. Um, I just put a few of them on here. I, uh, you know, we see in, in large enterprise type companies, you know, we see SAP success factors quite a bit. Uh, we see Oracle, HCM Cloud quite a bit. Um, you know, uh, as you move down, you know, there's, there's, companies like Bamboo HR that, you know, is very good. There's, um, you know, Silk Road, there's Zoho, there's Workday. There's a lot of different players out there. Um, you know, I'd be remiss not to mention Microsoft, of course, because I, I work with them. But, uh, you know, Microsoft is in that space and has different solutions that can scale from very small to very large organizations. And each of these applications are gonna have different strengths and weaknesses. You know, SAP is very good at uh, more of the learning management side of things, whereas, you know, Oracle is a little better at the recruiting side of things. Um, some of them, you know, try to say they do everything. You know, Workday kind of promotes they do everything. Microsoft promotes we do everything. Um, so it's important to kind of look at these and keep your, your eyes open, your mind open to what is it that you really need. and if it's not going to provide everything you need, does it have the gateway or the connector that we talked about where you can pick up a best of breed? And you can go, you know, Oracle is an example for, you know, recruitment and, um, you know, Sage for everything else and then integrate them. So those are, you know, another strategy that you can look at as you start looking at some of these vendors to see, you know, can you get the single system that's really gonna do everything that you need? Or, you know, do you need to, to integrate some things together? So what are the benefits? You know, we, we talked about a lot of these as we've gone uh, through this presentation, but I really put them into a couple buckets. You know, one is improved productivity. The other one is reducing errors and improving compliance, and then finally analysis. Um, from a productivity perspective, anything that's a recurring task can be automated. And that's going to be the key, you know, having the workflows, you know, within HRIS, having, you know, some of the policies and procedures built out where you can automate those tasks is a great benefit for productivity. Reaching large numbers of people, you know, having the database of potential candidates where you can say, you know, I've got a position open and you've got a, a quick source of people you've already been talking to and you can go and try to recruit from. Uh, faster onboarding, you know, reducing paperwork, getting information out to the right people and keeping employees engaged. You know, all of that is gonna help improve productivity. And then from an error perspective, you know, having employees be able to update their own information is key. If, you know, they come in and they tell you that they've moved and they give you their address and you go and you type the address in, 
you're introducing a possibility of error. Whereas if the employee just goes and enters the information themselves, you know, one, you've saved time and in, improved productivity, but two, you've taken the element of a potential error out and the employee is able to, you know, make sure that that's entered properly. Collaboration, you know, is again going to get us to the point where um, with more people involved and in looking at things and discussing things, you're not going to have, you know, the, the same, um, you'll, ha you'll have increased, uh, you know, productivity and you're also going to have increased accuracy because you have multiple people looking at it and making sure it's right. There's training capabilities that are going to help, you know, with compliance as well as error reduction. Uh, we can include safety training. We can include, uh, you know, training on, on different business policies, whether it's, you know, internet usage or unconscious bias or, uh, you know, any other areas that are important to the organization. Um, we manage scheduling a lot better. There's reduction in payroll errors. Time and attendance tracking, we're putting it in the hands of the employees. And, you know, we're getting a more accurate uh, read as opposed to somebody having to keep track of where everybody is. And then decreased compliance issues. You know, we mentioned being able to get reports of employee demographics or if it's a safety incident, um, having all the workers' comp documentation within the HRIS and being able to produce those reports for OSHA is critical to organizations. And then finally, analysis. You know, I think I've, I've talked this one to death probably, but, you know, you have an HRIS, which is a single source of data. You have all of that data collected from before they were hired until the time that they retire from the organization, whether that's voluntary or involuntary. Um, robust reporting tools and dashboards with self-serve capabilities. You know, the, the self-serve ad hoc reporting is key to this where we wanna make sure that as you go in and you're looking at reports, you know, it's great to say, okay, I want this report this different report, I'm gonna to go to IT and have them do it. You know, it's gonna be a while before you get it and it may not be as relevant or not as helpful for a decision. Being able to do ad hoc reporting yourself gets you the ability to make decisions faster. And then predictive analytics. You know, I, I mentioned an example of, you know, figuring out, you know, if you hire from one source versus another source, is there, you know, a difference in how long they stay. You can start to predict what's gonna be a good hire or a bad hire based on the different criteria and data sets that are within the HRIS. So hopefully, um, you know, you've gotten a good overview of, you know, the maturity model, where HRIS fits into it, and, you know, a few things to look for and where some of the benefits are you know, as well as a couple vendors that you can go take a look at. And with that, I will turn it back to Anna and ask if there are any questions in the chat window. Thank you so much, Howard. Wow, that was such great information that you've shared with us today. Um, but yes, uh, please feel free to submit any questions you have into the chat panel and please be sure to send it to all panelists. We'll spend a couple minutes um, answering some questions. And if you have any questions that we were unable to answer, if you think of something later, I have my email on this screen here as well um, that you can send it to after this webinar. One great question for you, Howard, is um, how would you distinguish reports from analytics? I, I think the key to that is really to think in terms of being able to predict things. You know, when I think about a report, I tend to think about what has already happened. It's more reporting on history, where, you know, analytics is really getting to more of the data that um, is going to help me drive an action or predict what's going to happen. So, you know, for example, if I look at 
uh, you know, different behaviors of an employee that I'm collecting data on, and I can start to see a pattern and predict if I see employees, you know, taking a lot of personal time, I can probably mm. predict that they're looking for another job. And things like that, you know, are, are more the analytics that I would look for. Great, thank you. And another question we have is um, our online format for our courses. So um, as I mentioned earlier, our courses are in an asynchronous format, which means there's not a specific day or time you need to be logged on. Um, but it is structured week to week, so you do, it's not completely self-paced. You still do move through the course with your classmates. Um, and there are due dates throughout the week that you will need to meet. So um, if you think you're going to miss more than a week, of class, we do recommend um, possibly enrolling in another quarter where you're able to attend all of or go through all of the weeks. And Howard, we have a question for you. Um, what are your top three key vendors for HRIS? I, I think a lot of that depends on the size of the company. You know, I tend to look at, you know, Workday is probably the, the top one that I see in, you know, mid-sized companies. I would say um, Ulti Pro is another one that's very uh, popular within mid-sized companies. Um, when you get to the large companies, you know, it's typically uh, SAP, Oracle, uh, Lawson are kind of the big ones. Um, smaller companies, I tend to see more uh, Kronos, uh, ADP, um, I'm trying to think who else, uh, Bamboo HR is another one that I see kind of spanning the small to the midsize. Uh, you know, and then of, of course, like I said, Microsoft, um, you know, I, I compete against all of the ones that I just mentioned. And, you know, we span mostly, I would say, you know, the, the midsize to the upper midsize is, you know, where, where we fit best. Thank you. And we have a question, will this session be available to review later? Yes, the session is being recorded and it'll be available on our website um, within one to two business days on the free events page where you registered. We have a tab for on demand where it'll be available from doing. And Howard, one more question for you. Um, what is the difference between HRIS, HRMS, and HCM? Okay, um, HRIS and HRMS are pretty synom synonymous. Uh, typically, if you look up HRIS, a lot of times they'll refer you back to HRMS, which is Human Resource Management Systems. So if you're talking about HRIS or HRMS, you're pretty much talking about the same thing. When you talk about HCM, that's human capital management. And I think of human capital management as more the process around uh, the systems. So that's you know, kind of uh, putting the programs in place, running the processes, um, you know, running the programs, uh, you know, and then you know, all the results would be tracked within the HRIS or the HRMS. But the HCM is really the, the conceptual theories and programs and processes around it. Thank you. And since we are running out of time, um, we, I have my information again on the screen here. So if you think of any other questions or have anything else you want to ask, please feel free to send it to me. And if it's a question for Howard about HRIS, then I will forward it on to him as well. So feel free to send all questions over to me at anna.yoshida at uci.edu. Um, I hope you all enjoyed this webinar and gained so much insight into um, HRIS. And if you saw any of the fall courses that piqued your interest, please remember to register early and consider adding our HR Management Certificate Program to your 
professional portfolio. Um, thank you again, Howard. Uh, thank you all for joining us and have a great day, everybody. Okay, thank you. Thank you.